Unlike Sonic the Hedgehog, which took a long while for a movie to happen, Mario has had a history with movie adaptations. The first being Super Mario Bros. The Mission to Save Princess Peach, which was considered mediocre, but then there was also the live-action Mario movie in 1993, which, while it does have its fans, most fans hated it for how it barely had anything to do with the games. And this would also be the start of a string of a lot of video game movies that ranged from OK, Unfaithful, Trainwrecks, or UA Ball. Then, after 30 years, we got a new Mario movie in collaboration with Nintendo and animated by Illumination. This started as the biggest internet paranoia due to, before this, Illumination was considered the black sheep of animation. Which is undeservedly because there are moments where they do something great. The animation in their films is unique and colourful. And contrary to the jokes people make about how they play it safe in their movies, they have their risks and creativity. A supervillain who becomes a loving father, American Idol with animals with depth to the characters singing, and the minions. While I'm hoping Illumination will make a film that's on par with Disney and DreamWorks, I love how their style is more colourful and bouncy, with a focus on simple stories. So, Illumination has movies that are more good than great. Except these two. They're not the best. Another thing that made the internet go insane about this movie was the casting they chose, most notably Chris Pratt as Mario and Jack Black as Bowser. To go over my reaction to the cast, I was mostly puzzled with Chris Pratt as Mario because they could have had Charles Moronet as Mario like in the games. And I was apprehensive about Jack Black voicing Bowser because how could an actor who sounds like this... And for weaknesses, endurance. And what else? Let's see. Heat, sun, and sand. Shouldn't be a problem. It's not like we're in the middle of a goddamn desert or anything. Sound like this. There were even some fun fan animations used for the casting choices. Then, the trailer was finally released. It was then people went from making fun of this idea to actually being excited about this movie. The animation looked great, the voice acting was half-half for the most part, some fun easter eggs to point out, and it felt like an actual Mario movie. Jack Black was actually brilliant as Bowser, and Chris Pratt was sounding better as Mario as more trailers were released. And before someone in the comments goes and says, Oh, Mario shouldn't sound like that. Mario has to be Italian sounding. I see your point, but where were you when Mario sounded like this? Hey, paisanos! It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! You know what they say, all toasters toast toast. No, they do not! They toast bread, don't- Now, with the Mario movie first having the release of it being in near the end of 2022, then delayed to April 5th, 2023, Finally, it was showtime. I cosplayed as Luigi, while my family cosplayed as Mario characters, as you can see in this clip and these photos. Hi, hi, hi. We're the Mario Brothers, and plumbing's our game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. And after watching it, well, I'll share my thoughts once we get the synopsis done. In this movie, Bowser went to the Icelands and has stolen the superstar to rule over the Mushroom Kingdom and marry Princess Peach. While in Brooklyn, Mario and Luigi are now leading their own plumbing company together, only to be disowned. However, after trying to complete a big plumbing job, they fall down a green wall pipe where Mario is sent to the Mushroom Kingdom, while Luigi gets kidnapped by Bowser. That's where Mario meets Princess Peach and Toad to go on an adventure to gain forces from DK to help fight Bowser and save Luigi. Unlike my Sonic movie review, where I went through the scenes one by one, I'll go through the areas of improvement and the awesome points right off the bat. Awesome point number one. The animation looks brilliant. I know that's the common thing to say about Illumination movies, but this is seriously their best work. Not only is there a lot of detail and colors, but the characters look quite faithful to the source material. I even love the many easter eggs they added in the movie. I'd give out all of them, but given how much Mario fans adored the franchise, myself included, you already know about each easter egg. Awesome point number two, Mario's character. 
Mario has a good solid arc where he goes from being a butt monkey for his size to being a hero. Not only that, he's a really good brother to Luigi. Keep the Mario's a bad brother theory out of the comments section, thank you very much. Having Luigi to be the one to be rescued instead of Peach gives much more emotional connections because Mario has a stronger relationship with his brother as opposed to a princess he just met given this is an origin story. Chris Pratt has a surprisingly good Brooklyn Mario voice. And, as Mr. Cope put it, A lot of people did want Charles Marnay to voice Mario in the movie like he does in the games. I think he is wonderful and his voice has brought me joy ever since I first played Super Mario 64. With that said, I'm not sure how tolerable a main character speaking in a high-pitched Italian voice for 90 minutes would be. The occasional Mamma Mia and Yippee is perfect for a video game, but do you want to hear that voice speaking in full sentences for an entire movie? As an additional awesome point, I also love the fact that Peach is somewhat of a mentor to Mario, with her teaching him about the power-ups that he'd later use to fight DK and later Bowser and they develop a friendship naturally without forcing any romance in the movie. Awesome point number three, Luigi. While he was sidelined in this movie, since he was kidnapped, he does serve a big purpose in the movie. The scene with Mario after the family dinner was really wholesome. The way they talk to each other and give each other support, and one line Mario says when they separate gives a big meaning when the two go superstar. Awesome point number four, Jack Black is surprisingly brilliant as Bowser. Bowser is at his best in this movie. He's really funny in the scene season, especially with his hilarious love and obsession for Peach. And when he's a dangerous threat, you know he means business. Awesome point number five, the music. Unlike the Sonic movies, this movie incorporated similar motifs to the game's music, especially with Mario and Luigi beating up Bowser and the piano scene with Kemic and Bowser. And while it has pop music, they at least chose 80s music due to Mario being an 80s icon. And now for the areas of improvement. Area of improvement number one, the pacing is off. The film feels like it goes on fast forward, which makes some plot points drag too quickly, to the point where some of the story could have worked, but it gets skimmed over. Like for example, Toad could have been more than just the comedic foil for Mario and Peach. Or in the case of area of improvement number two, Mario and Donkey Kong's rivalry. After the battle which Mario learns from his practice at the obstacle course, they had some humorous rivalry, but the way it ends was rather rushed. The scene at the eel could have made a good wholesome scene, but it ends up getting brushed over because after they talk about their fathers, Donkey Kong had to insult Mario, they fight again, and then a rocket from DK's car happens to still work, and they rush to the climax. They could have made a good resolution if it had a second to breathe and work naturally in the story, kind of like a certain other rivalry that worked. Area of improvement number three, Cranky Kong's voice is irritating. Despite a few funny moments in the movie, Fred Armisen isn't the best voice. For one, it doesn't even try to sound like an old man, given the point of his character is that he's old and well cranky, pun intended. Other than those couple of nitpicks I have, it's still a fun and brilliant movie to watch. And given Illumination is planning both a sequel, a Donkey Kong spin-off, and even a spin-off based on Luigi's Mansion, I'm welcoming it. And with that, I give the Super Mario Bros. movie a 10 out of 10. And I'm certainly giving this film my ribbon of awesomeness. And with that, thanks for watching my thoughts on this movie. If you liked my review, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, stay tuned.